Hello, everybody. How are you today? Uh, anyways, uh, welcome, champions. Uh, my name is Dylan, and I'm coming to your screen live from Codename Entertainment's uh, streaming freezer, hence the layers, uh, in beautiful Victoria, BC, Canada. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to thank Dungeons & Dragons for everything that they do uh, and for allowing us to join you here each week on the official D&D Twitch channel, even in the middle of summer, when I'm pretty sure um, there are only two shows on today. I think it's just us and Welch's Game Juice after this. Um, and it, it, as I as I always say, uh, it is and will always be an honor to be here. Uh, I'd also like to give a huge shout out to Erica, my co-producer, who is also managing the CNE Games account in chat, uh, and who will be handling all of the uh, all the the raffles that we do with uh, clever riffs on things that we've been talking about uh, that often poke fun at me. I'm pretty sure one of the one of the entries was Edgelord last week. You know, because edge lords are cool. Uh, hello, uh, Silesa, Nomad eighty four, uh, Krillili, Willis Watcher, uh, Super Bowls, uh, Shark Fists, <laughs> Shark Fists, Elodris, uh, Mayamano, Narum, uh, Red Seer, and I were chatting about uh, Pink Floyd a moment ago, and I would love nothing more than to put a Pink Floyd soundtrack on uh, uh, during stream, but uh, alas, that would get us muted on Twitch, uh, which is not what we want. So, uh, hello, uh, Narun Gun, uh, the Hasty Tadpole. Or is it X Gun X or is it just Gun? Uh, Grand Centro Electro Biromancer. Ah, welcome back, Biromancer. Uh, Ixniz with the uh, neon green that I can almost not read from the viewing angle of this monitor. Uh, our Warehall. Hello. Uh, yes, this is our our Midsummer Two stream. Um, there are no guests today. Uh, we were really hoping. Uh, and I'll just I'll just get into this for a little bit uh, before switching over to a screen that shows uh, today's uh, combination. Um, we were planning, hoping to have uh, uh, Justin come on stream to talk about a new feature that's coming to the game. Um, but uh, it being summer, more than half of our office is not present, and Justin is just busy. <laughs> he's he's trying to get said feature complete. Uh, uh, so instead of having a Q and A related to uh, a new upcoming feature. Uh, we are hoping, fingers crossed, to uh, uh, get a dev blog out uh, uh, today or tomorrow on the subject. Um, uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, um, there will be some new stuff coming uh, in the next the next couple of weeks. Uh, not just not just our Grand Tour Part Nine update. Uh, so no guest today. Just just you and me and uh, and uh, this this game, Idle Champions. Such a good game. Oh man, if you if you guys haven't heard of Idle Champions, you should totally play it. Um, I have this uh, just random Zorbu formation kind of idling through Beast Intentions just to see how it does. I've been playing around a lot with the with the new formations of late. Um, you know, now that Walnut allows you to have a different tank slot used and just getting familiar with uh, new Zorbu and uh, Shandy and her ridiculously awesome just kit. Her kit might be too good. We're not going to change it right now, but it might be too good. Uh, oh, I've just been told by one of our developers that actually uh, Shark Fist is one of our developers. Uh, so welcome. Uh, yeah, uh, it's like it's like all you guys want from me is is, is a, a free combination, which you can you can find one. Um, and there is another one, uh, although it is uh, it is hidden um, somewhere in this stream. Uh, it will be hidden. Uh, there's another thing uh, that we're going to be doing today, which is announcing the winners of the Max Dunbar art. Um, these wonderful, completely unique, one-of-a-kind, hand-drawn uh, Shandy sketches with inks. Um, uh, whom, whomever wins one of these, uh, uh, I highly recommend putting it immediately in some kind of frame or something. They look really, really nice. Um, not that you can see it very well from this angle, but uh, you know we have three different ones. One's, each one of them just Shandy Freefoot, holding a bow, doing something cool. One of them just got a bow and a short sword. I think that's my favorite one. Um, I don't really want to give these away, but, uh, but we are. <laughs> We're giving them away. So um, I will announce those winners in about ooh, a little bit. Coming up pretty close here. Just make you wait just a little longer. But uh, but uh, the, the names have already been drawn um, just before the start of the stream, just in case anybody was wondering or wanted to last minute sign up. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so that's what's 
that's what's going on. Uh, oh, I am here for you too, Dylan. You have great stage presence, and I really appreciate your soothing voice. Uh, thanks. I appreciate it. I, uh, I, you know, I, I drink my whiskey, make sure to keep it nice and coarse. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, where's Zorbu's third slot golden epic? That is a great question for Chris, uh, who uh, chooses most of the uh, golden epics that come to the game. Uh, yeah. Uh, Kenka raids, uh, what are the purple coins? Um, so I have the, the lovely Kathris Draub in my formation right now. And um, as part of his design, what he does is he can summon shadow demons. Whoops, I just yanked the, the cord out of the controller. Uh, he can summon a shadow demon once you've selected, picked up enough of these pink coins. And so it's just to signify um, each time that you're picking up a coin uh, for him. He also uh, shaves off a, you know, a few percent, a, de a decent chunk of your gold find. So I don't recommend using him early, but uh, especially if you're trying to build favor in a new campaign. You'll probably notice that he's doing it, uh, in which case use uh, Deacon and you know one of the good slot four gold pine champions to build up your favor. But um, yeah, so the pink coins are for summoning the shadow demon. I can actually you can actually cheese it if you go into your inventory and use a whole bunch of uh, contracts. Please don't crash the game. Uh, yeah, how about eight of these? Because I like round numbers. So then when I pick these up. Blunk, there's the demon hanging out with Tyrrell at the back. Um, not that there's a lot of instances where you need two DPS over one DPS, but maybe you're on an armored boss or something, and that's a good way to get your second DPS out immediately is just drop a whole bunch of uh, contracts. Um, anywho, what else we got? Uh, previously offered on a weekend. I'm wondering where the opportunity to buy it again lives. Okay. Um, I know this is a bit of a, a broken record at this point, talking about how in the future we plan to do X and Y. Uh, we want to, uh, baby shark fists, <laughs> uh, we want to um, incorporate a system into the game that allows players to have access to uh, previously available Golden Epic equipment cards. Uh, which ones exactly? TBD. How exactly the feature is going to end up in the game, TBD. Um, but some of the back end coding has been done and long since data mined about being able to make the server call, I think, to get the data uh, for, for it. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's part of planned upcoming features is the best thing I can, I can say about it. Um, it, will, it will be coming, uh, just like all the others. Uh, <laughs> exclamation, baby shark fists. Uh, is it Sharfist or Shark Fists? Or is it just people typos? Oh, those are typos. Okay, that makes sense. Anywho, um, yeah, there's kind of, it's an interesting week for us in that um, we were hoping to be able to share a bunch of uh, information and then, uh, uh, yeah, it's just, we're focusing on getting the features done and out sooner rather than talking about them. So next week will be a bit of an interesting week. Uh, Monday is a holiday here. So the office will be closed uh, Monday, August 5th, uh, and back open again on August 6th. Uh, so there won't be a community Q&A on Tuesday next week uh, on the Reddit. Um, but, you know, we will still be doing our live stream and releasing our next update once Midsummer 2 ends. So, yeah, that's kind of what's going on. Uh, Supply215 question. Is there a reason for Zorbu's favored enemy choices? Uh, especially interested in both Drow and Humanoid being on the list. I feel like I am abusing a system by farming Drow in the event that count for two different ones. Um, it's based off of Zorbu's previous favorite enemies, basically. Um, that's really it. Uh, it's the, the initial version, it tied into Zorbu's story. Uh, and this is this is an evolution of that uh, ability uh, with his uh, year one champion balance update update. Rework. Kind of a rework. I guess a little bit more of a rework than some of the others. Anyways, uh, Zorbu's changes. Uh, yeah, and uh, I, I highly recommend farming Drow. I recommend finding an area um, where Zorb you can have only Zorbu in the formation farming Drow and uh, just idling on it for the whole event and getting that number super high because 
I'm just going to come out and say this. Zorbu is crazy good as a DPS now. Uh, unexpectedly good, even. Um, yeah, he just totally kicks ass. So keep doing it. Uh, what's the holiday? Oh, God. It's either it's uh, BC Day, I think, on Monday. Is that the one? Uh, August 5 holiday. I want to say it's BC Day. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, it's BC Day. Uh, anyways, I was just, like, <laughs> I mean, the summer is kind of a blur for me. I don't know what it's like for the rest of you. I, t I don't notice uh, uh, time passing as much in the summer. It's just kind of every day is summer and it's warm and it's nice. Um, so when uh, when told that uh, Monday, <laughs> Monday the office would be closed in our morning meeting this morning, I was like, yes, because uh, I'd forgotten. So yeah, that's how tuned in uh, Dylan is because uh, when Dylan's not here, he, he hibernates in a cave, uh, you know, listening to angsty music. Uh, Cantankerous Gandalf, welcome back. I've always loved that name. Uh, do you know the Twitch loot raffle codes before they are posted here, or is it always a surprise? Um, so the Twitch ones uh, in the chat are set during the stream by Erica, and Erica is clever. So uh, she tends to listen as she's moderating and pick amusing things to make into the the raffles. So that's what she does. Uh, yeah. And as for the ones like the combination up in the corner, um, yeah, we, those are planned out in advance, although we don't activate them in advance anymore because players have been getting very good at figuring out combinations in advance. <laughs> uh, you know, like two of our 10 hidden combinations were discovered just last night, uh, which was a nice, a nice jump. There's only one left. Uh, so uh, we don't make them active until just before the stream goes live now. Uh, are there any plans for another level cap increase? Uh, well, not soon, uh, because we just had one. But uh, yeah, uh, there will be there will be more level cap increases over the course of the life of Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms. Uh, what is a good campaign to farm Drow? Um, I'm trying to remember. Because Drow are mostly villains in our events. Which one is it? Um, somebody will remember before me. Um, it's not coming to me. I remember, I remember in the running, there's a nice, there's a ton of uh, a Drow. Uh, Silesa says use Spider Marsh or Saugarath. Oh, so Silken Swamp? Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, so I hope that helps. Uh, let's see, Zello's 404. Is there any way that we can get the disable flashing lighting effects separated from clicker animations? The flashing monster's triggered by migraines, but it looks weird with the clickers just standing around on the field. Um, that's kind of a tricky question because it's there's a bit of a development rabbit hole that you can accidentally go down with, with toggles like that. Um, in an ideal world, you'd be able to fine tune all these things to, to both, you know, make it easier on anybody who's photosensitive while also allowing you to have as much of the animation and stuff active as possible. Um, for us, it's kind of a thing where we have to consciously look at how much dev time we have to work on different bug fixes, features, you know, implementing new events, whatever, whatever's part of our workload coming up. And, uh, you know, the disable flashing lights setting which is decoupled from some of the other, some of other, some of the other similar effects in the game, um, is one of those ones where there's a lot of different things that you could do. Um, so, yeah, uh, I will pass that along to David, and I'll see if it's something that gets, uh, you know, might get added to some kind of quality of life or bug fix update. But I don't know. Uh, where is your Narak to superpower Zorbu? Um, you know, in this formation, so I was playing around with that, Silesa. I wasn't sure where to put Narak in this one. Um, yeah. I wanted to have Shandy in the middle sur sur surrounded by uh, champions with 15 decks, which she is. And uh, Calliope is just kind of like, I was uh, swapping different buffers in and out with Korth Calliope and Caddy Bree, and like I just kind of got the best numbers for Zorbu here. Um, now, admittedly, I don't think... I don't know if I ever picked up any Narak uh, Golden Epics because I didn't use Narak. 
before. I mean, walnut's right here, so I mean, I guess I could move stuff around. Well, let's let's try it out. Yeah, just the one. Uh, 100 more damage. Uh, yeah, three good points, please. Alrighty, that's probably a higher DPS than Walnut, right? Oh yeah, way, way, way higher. Um, of course, now I don't have a tank. So what's my tanking option now? I mean, this would be good for the short term, but Narak can't take hits. I could make Spurt into a tank and shuffle some characters around. Well, we'll let it ride until somebody dies. I'd rather be talking to you than paying attention to my formation. I'm here for you. Uh, your interface looks different than mine. What version of the game are you playing? Uh, it's the latest version, Haphazard. Um, what you're noticing is that this is in the gamepad UI that is the default interface for on Xbox One and PlayStation 4. I'm using an Xbox One controller right now. Uh, if you go into your settings, there is a display in gamepad UI mode toggle. Um, that you So if you turn it on, um, the game will close, and the next time you load it, it'll have a completely different interface. However, you will need a gamepad plugged in in order to load. So, uh, yeah. I just kind of, I like the aesthetic of this layout more for streaming uh, uh, relative to the mouse and keyboard UI. Uh, was players finding the codes in advance a byproduct of the hidden codes? Uh, yeah, the 10 hidden combinations had the unintended side effect of people trying anything at first. And, uh, you know, sometimes <laughs> we don't do this anymore. Uh, but what we, what we would do is, you know, we, we were talking to Satine about uh, uh, Gilding Light's um, Storyteller's Guide show months in advance. You know, we've been working along them. We, we proudly partner with that show to help Satine pr produce content. And, uh, you know, there is a combination for each episode. Now, we made, we determined and made all those combinations way in advance. And so there was like 10 or 11 of those combinations just sitting there in the system with, they had expiry dates, but they didn't have, um, you know, they didn't have the, uh, like, start dates on them. We hadn't implemented that yet. So they were all just sitting there. And so when the 10 hidden combinations thing came up, it had the unintentional side effect of people, players discovering a bunch of those codes, players discovering codes for the uh, the acquisitions incorporated the C team episodes of the past season, players discovering combinations that we had actually forgotten about that were made to test out systems in the game from like alpha and beta. Like there were codes for all kinds of stuff uh, that players just started finding. And so we're like, oh God. So we like quickly retired a bunch of them. We ch shuffled around some of the expiry dates on them. Uh, if you missed any of the ones from uh, uh, Storyteller's Guide, I mean, those episodes are continuing to come out. There's there's more of them coming. And uh, yeah, it was just kind of, it was a side effect of starting a scavenger hunt, not realizing that so many other treasures had already been hidden. Uh, Wild Angel 61. Uh, will Naeli's DLC be going on sale before the DLC purge? Um, so we're, it's not that we're purging DLC so much as we're retiring some DLC. Uh, let me get the exact list before I try to do it from memory and totally mess it up. Um, so on August 28th, uh, at the end of this month, since it is now the first. Uh, so in four weeks, we will be retiring our, uh, our Founders Pack. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we gave lots of notice on the Founders Pack being retired. And so it's being retired at the end of the month. And then we will also be retiring, bup it up it up, uh, the Minsk's Giant Abu Costume Outfit Pack, as well as the uh, Fairy Dragon, Black Cat, Stinky, Pseudo Dragon, Gazer, and Chewinga Familiar Packs. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of they've kind of reached the end of their life cycle uh, in terms of how you know how many players are grabbing them that kind of stuff, uh, and so we're just gonna we're gonna. Let them let them fade away, retire them, uh, and uh, we'll, we will eventually be replacing them with other things. Um, each one of those listed DLC packs uh, will go on sale for a week, sometime this month. Uh, so if you are waiting to grab one for a decent sale, this will be your last chance. Uh, otherwise, um, they may return in some other 
accessibility form, accessible form, uh, uh, with another feature in the game in the future. But um, yeah, uh, for now they are they are being retired. Um, let's see, any plans to allow runs of previously completed variants, even if it is for no reward? Yes, um, we have. Uh, we have extensive plans around a, a system for the game that involves replaying previously completed variants or the difficult variants that you've had for different adventures throughout the game. I mean, we, there's, there's hundreds of them at this point. Uh, so yeah, um, we do. I can't share anything yet, um, but it is something that is very much on our minds and uh, yeah, hope to be able to address it sooner rather than later. Yeah. Um, dun, 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 dun. Uh, yeah, replays would be great. Yeah, it's it's kind of one of those things where, I mean, I want players who uh, you know struggled through Durable Deep to be able to play it again and still struggle because it's a nightmarish variant. Uh, it's mostly just really slow and time consuming and kind of hard. But yeah, um, I want it to come back. Don't you? Oh, it'd be great. Totally great. Um, unrelated question. Have you seen the boys series yet? Uh, yes, I have. Uh, I read that. I read that uh, comic series when it was released. It's one of those Garth Ennis series. That's kind of violent. <laughs> Maybe just, a, just, a, just a bit violent. Um, I have watched it. My wife and I watched it over the weekend. Um, and aside from the ultra violence that's in it, uh, you know, we both really enjoyed it. I thought they did a good job. Um, yeah, it reminds me of the Power Series. I was going to say that it reminds me of what the Power Series should have been. Like, for anybody who's not into graphic novels, Powers is a really good graphic novel series. Like, seriously fantastic. Um, but the show that they made out of it, not as much. You know, like, it's just kind of, yeah. Um, yeah, I won't. I won't go too far down that rabbit hole. But um, it had a bit of a disappointing series. Whereas the boys show, because that Amazon, Amazon made that adaptation. You know, it's got like a feature film budget for a TV series, which is good because I think it's like eight episodes long. Um, and they've managed to grow upon the comic book series and expand upon it while also, you know, and they've done a fantastic job. I think it's super good. Um, I mean, you have to you have to like like really adult kind of violent shows right like the the violence in it is horrific i mean if you think for a second about what a human who is physically capable of running at the speed of sound could do and if they ran through the street and accidentally ran through another human what would happen well one human is getting hit by another object going at what 750 plus miles an hour um pretty easy to picture what that's like well on the boys you get to see <laughs> Anyways, so I recommend it, but definitely not for kids. Um, uh, yeah, Amazon is on a bit of a hot streak. Good Omens is a pretty good show. I, I very much prefer the original uh, Terry Pratchett, Neil Gaiman novel to the series. Um, but, um, you know, uh, Michael Sheen and David Tennant did a kick-ass job. Um, everybody involved in Good Omens did a kick-ass job. Uh, you know, I don't have any complaints about it. It just... Um, it just didn't excite me that much. Uh, it adhered pretty closely to the source material and just didn't, it just didn't really blow me away. You know, I enjoyed it, but it didn't blow me away. Um, uh, the Witcher, The Witcher is a Netflix show actually, but I'm very excited for that. Who wouldn't be? It looks awesome. Uh, and then obviously Amazon's doing their uh, Lord of the Rings show that's gonna be in the, the third age or the second age. Like it's sometime in the past before, uh, before, uh, well, before the Lord of the Rings took place, uh, the series. Um, but yeah, The Expanse, <laughs> that's, that's what I'm truly excited for. As a huge diehard sci-fi fantasy nerd um, leaning towards sci-fi in many ways, um, The Expanse is a seriously awesome novel series. If you like science fiction, um, it's bloody fantastic. It is really, really, really good. Um, I'm eight books in, I think. I haven't read the most recent one that was released in March this year. That's the only one I haven't read. Uh, 
And so the show, um, if you've read the books, is an amazing adaptation of the books. Amazing. Like, they get it, they get all the characters bang on. They're right. The casting for them is fantastic. The only one that I felt kind of weird about is Jim Holden's casting, but it's kind of a weird character to cast. But, I mean, Bobby Draper is casting. Amos is casting. Amos Burton, Burton's casting. They're all, they're all fantastic. Uh, the actors are fantastic. And the show is the best science fiction show that's been on TV since uh, uh, Battlestar Galactica ended in like 2006 or seven or whenever it was. Um, yeah, seriously, seriously fantastic. Really hyped that they have a season four even coming, uh, let alone this December, but even more excited for season five as they've already greenlit another series of The Expanse afterwards. Because let me tell you, if you read the books, um, there are moments in that series that are like breathtaking moments <laughs> and uh book five uh certainly has one of those and knowing that i'm going to get to see that with these actors in this story holy shit um yeah amazon is adapting a wheel of time series i don't know are they wheel of time that seems like a i mean are they going to make it like 10 bajillion hours long to line up with the books because i read the first i don't know eight books something like that I don't remember when I stopped, but I just I couldn't keep going because they were so bloody long. I'm just gonna look it up. Bum 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 bum. Uh, oh yeah, it is on Amazon. Um, but it's probably a ways off, right? Yeah, they've only cast Roseman Pike as Moiraine, which is good casting, um, but that's a ways off. So I don't know. I guess we'll see. I mean, Jeff Bezos can fund whatever he wants, right? The guy's worth like $150 billion or $140 billion, some insane amount of money. But luckily, he also likes The Expanse, so here it is. Um, could you make the familiars a tiny bit cheaper or buff the gems you get? Um, we're probably not going to do that, Paid Squash. Uh, not because, you know, we're trying to... It's, it's kind of like they're gated by time more than anything. Uh, you reach a point in this game where... You just have gems to spare and nothing to spend them on. And it, admittedly, it takes a while to get there. Um, but yeah, you will, uh, you will, you will get there. Um, Keeper GFA, can we get bounty contracts out of the loot list for special gold chests, please? Um, I mean, that's a, a question better answered by Justin. Um, my guess is that that's probably gonna be a no. But um, at the worst, I can pass the idea along to him. Oh, excuse me. Just going to make a note about it. <laughs> Too bloody long sounds like me with anything that's over five pages. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think the thing about reading for me is I, I used to read maybe a book a week, um, sometimes faster. And then I went to, I, you know, I did some post-secondary education, which everybody should do, or at least try. And it killed my desire to read for years. Like, it made me just never want to read again because it destroys your desire to read recreationally by forcing you to read <laughs> uh, either scholarly crap or uh, uh, just, you know, textbooks or whatever, whatever you have to read. But it forces you to read for such a long period of time that uh, afterwards it's kind of like you want to get away from books. Um, and I'm only more recently getting back into it in the Expanse uh, series, starting with Leviathan's Wake was one of the ones that I picked it up. I devoured that book in a couple of days, you know, and read all of them very, very fast. Yeah. Um, I don't know if anybody caught the news, but there was a thing in here uh, uh, the other day talking about how um, the directors or the directing team of the the DC Flash movie because the Flash is who knows what's going on with DC all their stuff kind of seems to get stuck in development hell but they're taking a crack at a D&D &D movie um, which gets me excited although like one has to wonder like if you're going to do a Dungeons and Dragons film what what are you going to do like I mean there's a everybody's every person who loves Dungeons and Dragons especially if they're people who love playing Dungeons and Dragons more than people who consume the the, the books like our relationships with D&D &D are all so different, like how we feel about it, what we love about it and how we, you know, uh, how we play it with our friends is such a such a varied thing across the the entirety of everybody who plays D&D. Uh, uh, &D. Like it's it's so different that it's hard for me to picture a film that everybody who's a fan uh, of D&D &D can do. 
Uh, Scarab Phoenix. Uh, oh, looks like uh, it looks like the uh, the hidden combination for today's stream has been found. Uh, it's in chat. I'm not going to say it again. I already said it once on stream. Um, anyways, so it's hard for me to picture any any Hollywood studio, no matter how talented the team, making a one size fits all Dungeons and Dragons film that everybody who loves Dungeons and Dragons can love. Um, have I seen the D and D movies they've already made? Very bad. Well, I mean, I find them to be guilty pleasures. I, I think that. Some of the actors got the memo that they were about the kind of film they were making, and some of them didn't. Like, I think Jeremy Irons had a great time making the D&D movie. <laughs> you know, like, uh, yeah, he, uh, yeah, he looked like he was having a good time. Not every actor involved in the film did, but, uh, you know, Jeremy Irons can do camp. I mean, well, he's a fantastic actor, right? He's got, he's got an amazing voice, and, you know, he... Uh, you know, uh, you contrast his role in the D&D film to his role in Kingdom of Heaven, you know, where he's like that grizzled old Templar commander, you know, like it's just, it's, he's, you know, he's a pretty talented dude. Um, but yeah, he seemed to be the only one who understood that they were making kind of a campy movie with the D&D film. Um, the one with Marlon Wayans, yes. Yeah. It was not the best movie. Anyways, so... What story from D and D would you want to see as a film? Like, chat. Let me know. I'm I'm curious. Like, if you had the choice, like, you know, uh, say, uh, uh, you know, Sunstar DK or or Shark Fists or Silesa, Like, if you are if you were gonna pick the storyline from the from Dungeons and Dragons that you were gonna make into a film, like this is the film single film you're gonna make, like one up to two two and a half hour film. Which book are you gonna choose? Which which story? Are you going to pick one of the storylines from one of the Baldur's Gate games? Are you going to pick one of the novels? Um, you know, are you going to pick a? Are you going to pick Curse of Strahd? Um, which I mean, it's just it's Bram Stoker's Dracula in a lot of ways, but also it's really awesome. Like you could have any characters for it, right? Spellfire, that's a good choice. Strahd for sure, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Vox Machina, I could make ten million dollars. Uh, that's covered, uh, Keeper GFA. Uh, Vox Machina. I mean, I know they were only t intending to make a, an animated special, and now it looks like they're funding a dozen episodes. But, like, let's be honest. The Legends of Vox Machina is probably going to be a cartoon series with at least one full season. I bet more. My money would be on at least at least a couple seasons of it. Uh, Spellfire with a better ending. Uh, Dritz versus R2. Curse of the Azure Bonds. Yeah, those are good stuff. Um, Spelljammer. Oh, that's a trip. Um yeah, it's it's an interesting thing. So like, as iconic as Dritz is, uh, and this is, I mean, I, obviously I'm speaking on behalf of me and not Wizards of the Coast or D and D or even Codename Entertainment or Idle Champions. But like, I find it hard personally to believe that Dritz would be the most accessible character for a protagonist in a D and D film. I would I would want to do the Heroes of Baldur's Gate uh, characters. That's who I would do. I would get. Uh, you know, and I would I would mix in uh, some of the other more recent popular characters. Like, I think Dwayne Johnson could play Minsk really well. I think he could be a ridiculously charismatic dude talking to a CGI hamster on his shoulder and make the movie by himself. Uh, 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 you know, just just from him being Minsk in it. You know, have it make uh, you know hundreds of millions of dollars, um, and then just. Do either one of his storylines from lead, uh, you know, leading into him being turned into a statue, or, you know, hell, do the, you know, adapt, um, adapt the uh, the, you know, the first uh, Legends of Baldur's Gate storyline, you know, like have have Delina accidentally, you know, un un, you know, depetrify him and have. You know, uh, you know, have them unite with Neris Kathan and and Shandy and Cridal and go do stuff. You know, like, uh, but yeah, no, no, <laughs> scared Phoenix. The Rock is Boo. No man, uh, the Rock plays Minsk and Matt Mercer plays Boo. Of course, Matt Mercer as the voice of Boo because that's canon now, right? I mean, he did it in a Chris Perkins game, so uh, yeah, Ma Matthew Mercer as Boo always. Anyways, I, I would I would do something with Minsk and Boo, even if it's not the Heroes of Baldur's Gate, but something with uh, Minsk and Boo. Um, you know, I would have 
Joe Manganiello play Archon the Cruel and just get him to wear a prosthetic suit for all of it except for the head. Like, you know, he'd have the paint and the little dots on his head so he could they could CG Archon's badass red dragonborn head onto Joe Manganiello. But then other than that, have him wearing a huge prosthetic suit with all the armor and everything and, you know, hell, make him the bad guy. That'd be awesome. <laughs> with Morgan Freeman as the narrator. Yeah, that, that'd be cool. I mean... If money is no object and you can do whatever you want, then there's a lot of cool stuff you could do. Um, but yeah, I would do somebody like, yeah. Because the other reason, it's it's not just because I think Dwayne Johnson would be the best Minsk. Um, somebody wrote Dave Bautista in, uh, in chat, and Dave Bautista could also do Minsk really well. I mean, Minsk and Drax aren't really that different, <laughs> even. Um, but uh, it, the st star power matters, right? Like... Uh, how many rock movies have people gone to see or watch just because The Rock was in it, knowing in advance that they're not going to be good films? Like, I'm sorry, Rampage wasn't a great movie. Uh, fun to watch, and The Rock is awesome, but not a great film. I don't even remember the name of the, the sky. Oh, maybe it was called Skyscraper, the one with the tower in it, but it was, it was a bad movie. I watched it on my flight to Hawaii, or was it my flight back? One of the two. I don't know. Um, a live action of the D&D cartoon? I, I would say do it, but, I mean, Brazil already did, and they killed it. Yeah. Jumanji 2 was really good. Uh, <laughs> and there's going to be another one. Uh, Archon is a villain in Rampage? Yeah. Yeah, kind of, hey? Yeah, Joe plays like that evil dude who gets... Spoiler, eaten by wolf. Um, anyways. I could talk about films, pop culture, uh nerdy stuff all day long. Steven Seagal as Artemis and Trary? Uh, no. No. Uh, first of all, I mean, I'm pretty sure Artemis and Trary is a dark-skinned dude because he's from Kalimshan. So, you know, he should look kind of Arabic. Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe somebody like uh, uh, Oded Fair would make make a good Artemis and Trary. Uh, plus, he's a good actor, great voice. Yeah. Plus, Entrary was young. Yeah. Uh, I think that live action commercial is why people want a live action D&D cartoon. It is proven workable. Yeah. <laughs> Betty White as matron mother Bainray. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. 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 Uh, Entrary is actually lighter skinned and smaller than you expect. That's not what Ari Salvatore wrote in Crystal Shard. Anyways. Uh, I don't. I don't personally know what the canonical exact look of Entrary is because he's been interpreted a bunch of different ways and written about a bunch of different ways. And uh, let's see. Do you think the locations and recognizable monsters are more important than the main cast if you're trying to pull an audience beyond the D and D fan base? I think that any D and D film has to include at least one or more of the most iconic of D&D's monsters, like the ones that are uniquely Dungeons and Dragons. So if it doesn't have like either a Mind Flayer or a Beholder or an Owlbear or like a gelatinous cube or something along, you know, if it doesn't manage to fit in one of those key ones, um, then how is it different than any other fantasy universe, right? Like it needs, that's, that's those are the things that are distinctly D&D &D in my mind. It's, a, it's like the, the mix of stuff. Um, you know, there are a lot of fantasy universes, many of them in the D&D &D multiverse in different forms, right? Like you have everything from Kryn to Eberron to, you know, uh, Toril. Um, yeah. Uh, so I, I do think that the, like, an important location, whether it's Baldur's Gate or Candlekeep or, uh, you know, a Waterdeep or, you know, some, one of those places, um, you know, that's important because, you know, fantasy backgrounds are good and you can breathe a lot of life into a city, uh, you know, by, by how, in how you portray it. I mean, think about think about what comes to mind for you when you picture Gotham City these days based on, like, all the Tim Burton films and even the Joel Schumacher films and then the Christopher Nolan films. Like, you know, like, it has an aesthetic. Um, you could do that, oh, excuse me, with a fantasy city uh, from D&D as well. But um, that being said, uh, I think, yeah, one of the more iconic monsters has to be in there, you know. Uh, maybe it's the Xanathar, you know. Maybe it's uh, something else, but it's got to have at least one of the uh, the the uh, 
one of the iconic D and D monsters or more. You know, um, it's got to be in there. Especially since when you think about it, um, you think about the average movie consumer, people who like just going to fantasy movies. Uh, sure, like people who are fans of fantasy are gonna probably know. Oh yeah, this is from D and D. But like the average audience go goer, you know, they're gonna be like, a dragon is a dragon is a dragon. Who cares what color it is? Who cares what race? It, like it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't have a meaningful thing to them, and it doesn't it's not immediately distinct when you look at it, but, you know, a beholder has only been in one thing, you know? Uh, so, yeah. Uh, let's see. So if I haven't read many D&D &D stories outside of modules and campaign books, and now I'm looking for something new to read, where would you recommend I start? Uh, Brimstone Angels. Uh, Aaron M. Evans' uh, series about Farida uh, would be where I, what I would recommend first. Uh, Deidaru for Snow. Dylan, if you had an infinite budget and could take any four big actors in a round table, like Critical Role style D&D game, plus a famous dungeon master, assuming they all know how to play, which five would you pick? Huh. That's interesting. That's really interesting. Um, so I don't think that Big name actors are important to an entertaining D and D experience. If you're watching players play at a at a at a table, I mean, no offense to the cast of Critical Role because they're amazing, but none of them are even B list actors as far as like sitting at a table actor, right? Like they're not they're not that famous. Um, I don't think, but I also don't think that having really famous actors play is going to make something more entertaining. Um, I think you would want at least one person who's funny, uh, one or two who are hilarious, uh, but not too many because you don't want the game to devolve into hilarity all the time. Bill Murray is the bard or Bruce Campbell is the bard. Those are good choices. Um, I was thinking that Stephen Colbert would also be great as the bard. I mean, I don't know how many of you watched uh, his game with Matt Mercer, but he looked like he was having fun. He was in it. And, uh, you know, I think people who are going to enjoy themselves are also important. Um, you know, I know that Vin Diesel is super into D and D, and apparently, uh, allegedly, has like his D and D character's name tattooed across his chest or something like that. Um, I think if you're going to pick an actor like that, you might only want one, like, big ego dude <laughs> in there. You know, um, God, who would be fun to play D and D with? Just thinking. Who would be fun? Who would I want to play D and D with? Um, Stephen Colbert would be fun. Who else is funny? I don't. I don't follow pop culture like modern, like new pop culture as much as I do old stuff. I watched way too much TV in in the '90s and early aughts, and I don't watch any now. Um, who is funny that I follow on my Twitter? The Iron Sheik is pretty hilarious. If you're getting into D and D characters, <laughs> We're wrestling characters, the cast of Star Trek, Felicia Day, uh, yeah. Um, I think the storyteller that you have uh, to watch is important. And I would want probably um, Chris Perkins DM. I like, I personally really love watching Chris Perkins uh, DM people. Because uh, he just, I just like watching him pay attention to everybody and then just find new ways to twist the knife in his players constantly. <laughs> it's just ruthless. Um, yeah. <laughs> the Iron Sheik would be a drip because he do drugs. Yeah, that would be nuts. Um, Deborah, Deborah Ann Wall is a fantastic uh, a, a DM as well. Yeah, uh, Garwar talking about her. Um, the guys from the Big Bang Theory. Eh. Um, yeah, Chris Perkins playing is, is also really entertaining. Um, <laughs> this Dylan guy seems fun to play D&D &D with and he's on the D&D &D channel. That makes him famous. N not so much. In a very, very small circle. You know, I go to the descent where it's all the people from the D and D community, and some people might ha know who I am. <laughs> Brian Pasane. Yeah, um, I'm gonna go ahead and let's say that you can't use anybody that's already on a cast list. You know, we know that Deborah Ann Wall is an amazing DM. We know that Matt Mercer is an amazing DM and player. You know, we know that you know we know that all these people are awesome. The Sprouses, um, you know, people who have been on seasons of Force Gray, et cetera. Like, so let's let's ignore them because a little you're gonna get sucked into thinking about. What, who you'd like to see out of the people that you've already seen. And I don't think that's as much fun. Um, so let's, let's, let's try and ignore that. Um, let's see. Who do I follow on Twitter who I think is hilarious? Nathan Fillion, super funny. Would love to play D&D &D with. 
Uh, Anna Kendrick, super funny, would love to play D&D with. Um, she'd make a good bard. Uh, who else is cool and funny? Uh, Keanu Reeves, um, because he would be our fighter. No, I don't know. Keanu Reeves, come on, Keanu Reeves. Gordon Ramsay, come on. Uh, I just want to see Cat play Tethys, Willow's Watcher. Cat uh, plays Tethys really well, yeah. Uh, Fillion playing a Kenku bard. Uh... Joss Whedon DMing. Eh. Um, I mean, who are the the most interesting improv improvisational storytellers that you can think of off the top of your head? You know, Pat Oswald. Pat Oswald would be a great DM. In fact, I bet he knows how. I would put money on him knowing how. Taika Waititi. Yeah, that would also be awesome. Uh, yeah. So Keanu, uh, Keanu Reeves, uh, Nathan Fillion, Anna Kendrick, and I need a fourth. Um, I mean, it's already a pretty eclectic group um how about gina torres uh, uh from firefly uh you know who played uh played zoe uh just to round out that four so you have uh you know you have a balance of genders but you also have you know uh gina torres has one of the most fantastic voices i don't know how many of you pay attention to cartoons and stuff but she's voiced wonder woman for years uh she's an amazing actor totally underrated um yeah, that's that's my that's my team of four with uh, 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 Pat Oswald as as a DM. Can you imagine Robin Williams playing? Oh, uh, that would have been incredible. Yeah, um, put Alan Tudyk in there. Yeah, how about uh, also Alan Tudyk and uh, and Summer Glau and Morena Baccarin and uh, <laughs> let's just have the whole cast of Firefly. Um, that would be cool. Uh, Joss DMing can't think of how to progress a story and randomly kills a PC. Well, that's mean. <laughs> Trevor Noah, yeah. There'd be lots of cool people. But yeah, uh, that's my uh, that's my list. Nathan Fillion, Keanu, Keanu Reeves. Uh, I know everybody says Keanu, but it's it's Keanu is how you say it in Hawaiian. Uh, Nathan Fillion, Keanu Reeves, Gina Torres, and Anna Kendrick. That's the party uh, with uh, Patton Oswalt as the DM. And Patton Oswalt, sorely because of the... Uh, the rant from that uh, Parks and Rec episode. And if you've ever seen that show, you know which rant I'm talking about. Uh, that's the reason you want uh, Pat Oswald telling your story because you know that he knows all the things about all the different nerdy, nerdy groups and also some disturbing fan fiction improv. Um, so yeah, uh, wow, I spent a long time answering that question. Um, does anybody have any questions related to Idle Champions that I can possibly answer? That would be great. Um, yeah. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, if you put Summer Glow on your game, it will never make it past the second season. Oh, that's savage, Evil Sales has. It's too bad, too, because she's so talented. Um, she was on the show Angel, though as one of the ballerinas, wasn't she? I swear she was. Um, I, not that I want to get back into the whole Angel Buffy rabbit hole and talking about crying watching television, but I'm pretty sure Summer Glau was on an episode of Angel as the uh, the ballerina. Um, yeah. Yeah, she was. Um, yeah. Anyways, uh, Angel went on to have two more seasons after that, so... There. Um, also, fun fact, uh, Hawkeye, Jeremy Renner, also on Angel, with the most 90s hair you could possibly imagine a character having. You know, like, just the douchiest, most cliched, bleached tip. Oh, it was bad. It was super bad. When I, <laughs> when I rewatched that show with my, with my uh, uh, then-girlfriend, now-wife, Catherine, um, and we got to that one. She was like, oh, God. And I was like, oh, man, I forgot he was in this. <laughs> and it's just like, yeah, it was one of the one of the worst, uh, which is funny because he's a really good actor. I don't know how, how many uh, how many of you have seen him in roles outside of Marvel, but uh, fantastic actor. Um, yeah. Uh, man, Jeremy Renner, I'm just trying to think of what his best roles were. I mean, he was really, really good in the Hurt Locker, like could have won awards for it, but not probably not quite good enough for like a best actor nom. Um, and uh, oh, what was that one uh, that just came out a couple of years ago? 
uh, filmography. I just watched the movie Wind River, which um, if any of you haven't seen, um, it's a it's a sort of uh, murder mystery written by the guy who did Sicario. It came out a couple of years ago. It's dark and slow and brutal. Um, but yeah, um, Jeremy Renner was really, really good in it. I highly recommend it if you like films that are about grief. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyways. Uh, any chances for new non-real world money familiars? Yes. Um, that will that will happen. Um, as, as I know I've mentioned it before. So when it comes to familiars, there's a few things that we want to do before we add more to the game. Ugh. Just as a general thing. I mean, we will be... You know, I don't feel like I'm spoiling anything un unfair uh, at this point. We will be doing another Take This promotion in support of packs and mental health and stuff this year with another familiar coming up. Um, but aside from that, we are working on additional features and quality of life improvements related to familiars before we introduce more to the game. Um, you know, got to have things for them to do. Otherwise, you just get them all, and they they're in all the slots, and then that's that's it. You just kind of leave them there. It's not that much fun. So, um, you know, there's no choice at that point if you just have familiars in all the slots. So, you know, developing extra things for all of them, and and uh, adding more features, and then yeah, it's things like formation saves for familiars or familiar save spots. It's something that we're working on. Uh, Scarab Phoenix, when are we going to see Dragon Bait? Um, that is a great question for Chris. I was bugging Chris for whens on other characters lately. Um, I mean, all I can say is we're, we're doing our best. We're trying to balance a lot of stuff behind the scenes that lines up with how champions are released in our game. And um, almost none of it we are in a position to talk about uh, uh, for various uh, ethical and or legal reasons. Uh, we just We just can't get into it. Um, but yeah, we hear you, um, you know, we're sorry we talked about it so far out knowing that it was probably going to get pushed back and we're sorry that it has been pushed back. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, hopefully soon. Um, let's see, uh, as a newer player, will I ever get alternative champions for slots 11 and 12? Yes, you will. Um, uh, conspicuous, conspicuous compiler, um, you know, in addition to time gates, allowing you access to, well, I mean, just a handful of champions at a time at this point, but, uh, you know, you will get access to alternative champions for slots 11 and 12. Um, yeah, the answer is yes. Uh, me against the world, a glimpse at this weekend's champions. Uh, yeah, just hold on a second. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, let's see, August 2nd to August 5th, calculated weekend. Uh, Korth, Binwin, Minsk, Ayla, and Tyrrell. Ooh, yeah. Uh, so that starts tomorrow at noon Pacific. Uh, all right, Krom the Pale. You mentioned before about new formations. Will these include varying numbers, i.e. some adventures for just six characters, some for all 12? Um... That's a good question for Justin to answer. Um, usually when formation related like questions like that come up, it's tied in some way to, um, hey, you know, Grand Tour of the Sword Coast uses nine champions and all other events and adventures use 10. Um, when are we going to see 11 or 12? And that's kind of like, a, well, you know, in the event that we get to content where we want to do something like really epic and have a full roster in some way. I mean, maybe we'll get there, but uh, uh, it's not something that we're planning for the immediate future. And we, like, we do want it to be a choice, you know, like, cause the formation shape and not having access to all 12 slots all the time forces you to make a bunch of choices and how you put your, your formations together. So that's kind of the, the reasoning behind that. Uh, is there a chance that familiars that will be removed from the shop return as an option to spend our gems on? Um, I can't really comment on that feature uh, or anything related to that. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, any ETA on treants of any shape or size in game, like for Arbor Day? Um, I don't have an ETA on it, no. 
Uh, Mage Pie, question. Updates on your lunchtime campaign. Um, well, uh, hold on a second. Throat's getting a little dry. Um, so, the lunchtime campaign. I posted a, a long summary of all the most recent events in the lunchtime campaign in uh, this week's community Q&A, uh, much to the chagrin of Caddy and a few other players who <laughs> would rather that I didn't fi fill the entire update with uh, escapades from our lunch hours. Um, we haven't, and we haven't played since, and we're not going to play for a while just because we have people on vacation this week and over the next couple of weeks, it's going to like, we're never going to have that group of four people in the office again until like late August. Um, long story short, cause reading it on the, uh, the reading it in the community Q and a might be the best way to look at it. Um, because it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 12, 13, 14 paragraphs of just what happened last week in uh, in with the with adventures in the Amber Temple with a a party that now that I realize it started as a party of mostly good aligned characters and is now a party of mostly evil aligned characters, uh, shit went sideways. Yeah. Uh, anyways, Mage Pie. Um, yeah, I could. I, if if there's more time after I get through all the questions, I can get into uh, what, what's been happening of late, um, and what <laughs> how our characters have approached it. But uh, I, mean, I got a I got a list of stuff I haven't answered here, so I'm just going to try and get into that first. Uh, we need Artemis and Trary immediately. Artemis and Trary, yeah. Um, but I mean, which version of Artemis and Trary? As it, as it as it stands, uh, he has apparently changed color a few times over the course of his lifetime. Um, never mind alignments and, you know, weapons. Uh, so, yeah, it it's makes him a little less cut and dry than Dritz, who, you know, always looks like Dritz, um, always has Twinkle and Icing Death. And, you know, like, um, you know, Artemis and Trary is a little bit of a tougher nut to crack. Um, but I agree. We, I do think we need him. And I regularly bother Chris about it. Uh, Manning, 5916, will familiars be available as adventure rewards? Um, possibly. He doesn't have Twinkle anymore, really? No. Yeah. Well, I mean, I haven't read any uh, uh, Dritz books, period. So um, I've read, <laughs> like, I've read his Forgotten Realms wiki pages, his wiki pages, and comics with him in it, and played games that he was in, but I've never actually sat down and read Dritz's novels. I was uh, the one of those nerds who read about you know the Majeers in the Dragonlance series for like forty books. Um, didn't didn't read Forgotten Realms. Uh, I shouldn't be using blacksmith contracts for champions whose gear can be pulled from silver and gold chests, should I? Um, probably not. I mean, it's up to you who you want to be infusing with power, but. I mean, in my opinion, blacksmith contracts are better used on event champions um, that you want to make more powerful. Um, they tend to scale really well, too. Uh, play off the noob. Can we have a necromancer champion at some point in the game? Yes, I freaking hope so. I would love to have a necromancer. Yeah, Chris, Justin, making a note. Uh, Fat Cat Samson. Um, can you say whether the heroes of Erois are all planned to be out this calendar year? Um, I can't. Uh, yeah, the um, oh, is Narak about to get beat down and killed? Hold on a second. Let me just. Okay, I need a tank. Um, uh, how about? Oh, and nail your Grama. I, I, tend, I tend to get better results with Grama these days. And then I need to... that do it?
Yeah, that seems to be doing it. Anywho, uh, alrighty, what was the question? Uh, can I say, yeah, I can't say whether or not the, all of the heroes of Erewhis will be out this calendar year. Um, the last, what is we at? We have a Garon's Day, Bright Swords to wrap out the year two events, and then we get back into uh, High Harvest Tide, Liar's Night, Feast of the Moon, and Simril, and Midwinter. So we got seven more coming. We know that the next two are uh, an, uh, a champion with an ego, uh, and one that it's too early to spoil. We know who the next two are, so we have five more slots at the end of the year. Um, there's a lot of stuff shuffling around uh, the last the last um, few slots behind the scenes. So we might not um, finish off the rest of the Arrowist champions this year, um, but uh, you know we're still working on it. Uh, question. Uh, hold on a second here. Okay, so this is an interesting one. Uh, Kaleido Dragon brought up, and I don't want to uh, dodge the question. Um, if you want to support those with mental health issues, have you considered adding features to the game to cap spending and such for those with mental health issues, especially those with gambling and spending issues? Um, that's a <laughs> that's like a whole like two hour panel discussion with industry experts kind of question, um, and certainly not one that I am personally equipped to really give a detailed answer for. Um, I like this as a question that you're asking because you know. You bring up good points. Uh, when it comes to what we as a company can do to support, uh, you know, uh, different charities and things that we believe in, whether it's Lambert House, which you can't see it, but wearing my Lambert House D and D shirt, my favorite, my favorite uh, ampersand shirt, um, you know, for you know LGBTQ youth to uh, Extra Life, which we support BC Children's Hospital, um, and Take This, which we use to support. Uh, creating safe spaces at PAX events. Um, at the end of the day, like you kind of, you got to push for to and to support the causes that you can. Um, you know, it, I don't know that it's possible to support every cause that you want all the time, but it's important to us to be able to give back to BC Children's Hospital. I mean, we have a number of staff here who have either been you know have either gone themselves or you know with with family you know it's a, it's a pretty important thing um and obviously lgbtq youth are subject to a lot of different types of discrimination and hate crimes and all these other kinds of horrible things and bullying and so on um you know that varies wildly across the world because laws are different everywhere and you know and then creating safe spaces at PAX, you know like supporting take this it's it's just something that we like to be able to do um, when it comes to putting features into the game, I mean, we're not, we're not psychologists or doctors in that sense. Like, we need to balance putting enough features into the game that encourage players to support us because, you know, the lights are on, I'm here streaming, I'm here talking to you right now, I have a job um, because enough players support our game to do so. At the same time, um, you know, we want to make sure that our game is available free to play. Uh, so players can also not support us and that's fine too i mean as long as you know we're we're happy when people are playing our game that they're parts of our community and that they contribute to it um in terms of putting limiting in place in the game i don't know i mean I, i've never seen a game do anything like that um it's an interesting idea um but that's a kaleido dragon that is a really good question for a, a panel discussion i would love to hear someone like dr b um, uh, one of the spokespeople for Take This uh, address a question like that because it's it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a question that invites a lot of discussion uh, more than it invites a definitive answer. Um, alrighty, I miss Omen's weekly quests, but I'm enjoying the addition of Elminster and the Seven Sisters. Um, so the the most rec recent uh, uh, daily weekly quest system 
that was part of the game with acquisitions incorporated C Team Weekly Challenges. Uh, obviously, it only wrapped up a little while ago. Left an indelible impression. People liked it. We're glad. Um, an iteration of that kind of system will make its way into the game again. You know, it's not something we're done working uh, on. Um, but uh, to talk more about those kinds of features right now is a little bit premature. Um, but yeah, we're, we're working on stuff. Let's see. Uh, does going further in event free plays increase the odds of a golden ore over a silver chest? This week I've been resetting them all after level 225, and if it isn't a statistical anomaly, it seems to increase gold chests. So far, six gold, two silver. Uh, no, the chest odds are the same no matter what. Uh, Jokers forever. We need a Final Fantasy type musical bit to go with the bouncing champions after boss victories. Is that possible? Um, <laughs> uh, it's possible. It's not likely. Um, as, as you can tell, uh, uh, music is not something that we've invested a lot of time into for Idle Champions. We have, we worked on refining one piece of music and we left it at that. Um, now that being said, uh, like one of our dreams internally and something that we've actually discussed about actively would be like producing a more robust soundtrack and, you know, more detailed, different, different side effects and stuff like, you know, like really improving the, the soundscape of the whole game. Um, but for this type of game, it's just not likely to be something that we focus on doing. It's not likely to happen. Uh, I'm not saying it's not worthwhile, uh, but we're a pretty small company. Those kinds of things are expensive. And like, will it in any way help our bottom line? I don't know that it will. I, it's hard to make a business case for it, right? So um, maybe someday. Yeah, I would love to see it or hear it, I guess. Alrighty, maybe we've reached the point. Are the characters all at max level? They are? Okay, so maybe it's at the time point where I should start putting some familiars on the ultimate's roaming bar. Uh, boo. Iris. Eh, boo and Iris is enough. And then I'll just zap these guys. Pop. Uh, any updates on the Dragon Heist campaign? Last time you mentioned you were going to give them a few options, and some of those options could result in them still winning. Um, no update on that. Um, so the Dragon Heist campaign... Um, so there's two. There's the one in the office, which we were hoping to play some this week, but we just haven't been able to. And now Adam's about to go on vacation, so <laughs> that, that one's not going to happen. Um, the other one, my home one, uh, is one that we play like... We play it for a full weekend, which is to say like, you know, eight hours a day for at least two days. We do that like once every six months. Um, so we are most of the way through the campaign. We are entering the last chapter now. Uh, so the next time we sit down to play, which will uh, probably be this autumn sometime, um, we will finish it. Uh, but yes, I have considered the options and uh, I came up with a nice array of ways to move forwards given that they've lost the main campaign. Um, but they are, the party itself um, is on a collision course with the Castellanter family who have access to the last part of the campaign. Um, I'm not going to get into more detail, but um, their relationships with the, the Castellanters are not defined. They've only met and interacted with members of the Xanathar Guild and the Zentarum so far. So it's, uh, it's going to be interesting. And we'll see what they end up doing. I mean, uh, as much as you want to predict what the players at your table are going to do, you never seem to be able to. So I've detailed it a, a few possible paths, and we will see uh, which ones they take. Um, will we see other elemental-type bad guys, like air or water? We see tons of fire and earth, but I can't think of any air or water elementals. Hey, that's a great point. I'm going to pass that on to Chris. Chris, vary up your elemental choices. Um, no. It's not quite that simple, but uh, yeah, um, I will pass that along. Uh, is there a class slash subclass in 5th edition you want to see us C and E, C and E, uh, uh, tackle just for the challenger for fun? A class subclass in 5e. Um, hmm. Just trying to think of what we have so far. We don't have much in the way of... Uh, sorcerers like we have a wild magic sorcerer and we have a divine soul sorcerer and i think that's it 
Uh, we don't have much in the way of wizards. So wizards are really interesting in that, like, you could make a full-on dedicated support class. You could make a full-on, you know, um, you know, there's, you, there's a lot of different angles that you could take a wizard champion. Um, that would be really interesting. Uh, me personally, just selfishly, I mean, I would like to see, you know, uh, maybe some of the other paladin types. Because we have an Ancients Paladin with Evelyn, and we have an Oathbreaker Paladin with uh, Archon. And technically we have a, a, a Vengeance Paladin, I think, with Naeli. Um, or at least you have the choice between Devotion and Vengeance with their, her specializations. Um, not a lot of var variety there. But, um, yeah, I think I would like to see a, a Support Wizard or a, or, or a Necromancer or a, a, some kind of Summoner, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, like a druid who summons or a druid whose wild shape is to turn into elementals, right? Um, that's one of the coolest things you get to do as a druid starting at level 10 and, um, or a circle of the moon druid. And uh, it's not something we've done in our game yet. That'd be sweet. I'd love it if, you know, Grama right there turned into an earth elemental at the front of the party. Or if they were their DPS specialization, they'd turn into a fire ele elemental. Um, I suppose I could do water or air since we just said that we never use those elementals. But um, yeah, I'd like to see that too. Oh, the next question. What wild shape would you personally like to see in the game? Um, yeah, elemental wild shapes. Yeah, would be sweet. Uh, uh, I want to get a friend into idle champions, but they are bummed about how slow they get extra heroes. Uh, any thoughts in increasing the time gate fragments to drop rate or extra drop rates for people with fewer champions? Um, it's an interesting question. So what I can say is that as the champions list approaches 50, um, 50 champions in game, and we're getting close. We're going to hit 50 before the end of this year. Um, the odds that you get a champion that you want out of a time gate are getting slimmer. And, you know, obviously it takes a full year for all of the events to cycle around again and get access to each one of the champions that shows up. So that could be challenging as well. Um, How best to address this is still open to some discussion here. We have some plans. Um, nothing I can share yet because we're just not ready. But um, I can say that this is on our minds. Uh, very much so. You know, like the older the game gets, the more inaccessible it becomes for newer players with the sheer volume of features, champions, etc. in it. Um, you know, and if you don't feel like you can ever catch up, maybe you never want to because of it, right? So um, it's on our minds. Uh, all righty. Just gonna read the. One Mr. Ghost. You get so much gold, you have to use scientific notation. Um, yes. Yes, I do. Uh, when you first start the game and your divine favor levels are low and you're, you know, you're getting hundreds and then thousands and then tens of thousands, like, you know, it takes you a while to get to millions or billions of gold, then not using scientific notation is fine. Um, but. The numbers get high. <laughs> Once they do, it gets harder and harder to uh, uh, pay attention to them. So, uh, yeah. And I also like scientific no notation because at a glance, you can see whether or not something is improving instead of having to remember, you know, what all the different uh, letters for each one of the numbers mean. It's just, I don't know. My brain does it faster. It's like, it's just the number's higher or lower. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, will the heroes of Critical Role campaigns one or two ever be in the game? Um, if the opportunity were to present itself and where we could add champions to the game based on characters from, uh, you know, either Vox Machina or the Mighty Nine, uh, we would absolutely love to do so um, if that opportunity presented itself. And that's what I could say. Uh, let's see. Ooh, you have six pieces and we're not doing a time gate? Um, well, probably. I didn't, I mean, I don't, I don't, I didn't look, but let me just double check. Oh yeah, I have six time gate pieces right now. Hmm. It's funny. <laughs> uh, I used to have many, um, and I burned all of my time gate pieces um, because we needed uh, footage from a bunch of different things <laughs> for the game. So I, I just kept opening time gates and recording footage of different adventures <laughs> to just to like update one of our trailers or something. I forget exactly what it was. So I used up all my time gate pieces that way. Um, and this was before I realized that I can personally just set my adventure ID and just go to whatever one I want to go to. Um, 
<laughs> uh, I like your question, Soul Reaver. I'll be sure to pass it along to Chris. Uh, any news on the big event, High Rollers or C Team summaries? <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, that's up to Chris whether or not it happens uh, and if it happens when. Um, I wouldn't hold out a hope for it at this point uh, just because I've seen how busy Chris is with what he has on his plate and this is very much something that would be considered to be extra on top of it. Um, and uh, yeah, he's, he's busy. Uh, is it possible to make weekend chess only give gear? Count Casper. Um, sure, we could if that's how we wanted chess to work, but it's not. Um, yeah, we're not we're not gonna change the free chests we give out to only award equipment. Uh, Daidaru for snow. In for your formation, why do you choose Tyrrell for your furthest back champion? I am still having difficulties with formation strengths, trying to figure out some of the stronger combinations. Um, I am using Tyrrell's Moonbeam specialization, which provides a greater party buff the fewer champions that he is adjacent to. So that's why Tyrrell's at the very back. Because it's the any other slot, he would be adjacent to three or more champions. Uh, right now, he is only adjacent to two. So it's just to maximize his buff. Uh, who is your least and most favorite champion? Hmm. You know, if you'd asked me like a couple of weeks ago, I would have said my least favorite champion is Narak, but not anymore. Um, I think my, my personal least favorite champion is probably Stokey. Uh, although Stokey is much better now, I just, I can never find a reason to use Stokey over anybody else in that slot. I'm either using Paul in the buff or Jarlaxle for his gold find or you know, Ishii for some combination, but like Stokey never crosses my mind to use. Um, sorry, Stokey. Uh, my most favorite champion is Warden because Warden is the edgiest edgelord in the game. Uh, Scare Phoenix, which are your favorite ultimates? Mine are of Tyrrell and Keelik. I love the feathers effect of common motions and the sunbeam. Uh, my favorite ultimate is Daddyus's magic missile barrage because no matter how many enemies you have on screen, he will fire that many missiles plus five. And it's just satisfying to watch him just hold out his hand and fire off magic missiles like a bloody machine gun that smokes every enemy on screen. Uh, so it's my favorite one to see cast. Um, yeah. It's, I would unlock Daddyus just for that. Uh, what about an Artificer? Uh, hey, uh, once an Artificer becomes an official 5e class and not just an Unearthed Arcana, hint, hint, uh, I'm sure it'll be in a book. I don't know when it'll be. Uh, but yeah, once there's an official uh, Artificer uh, class option, um, you know, I'm sure they'll find a way in the game somehow. Uh, how about adding silver hero chests to the time gate free plays? Um, that's something that we have considered. Um, yeah, it has been considered. Uh, isn't Artificer supposed to be in Wayfinder's Guide to Everon? Well, I mean, it isn't It isn't currently, but I, I suppose, uh, Hellish Dream, you're referring to um, the comment that Nathan Stewart made at, made at the Descent about how, you know, there will be at some point an Everon book. Um, in which case, cool, yeah, if Artificer's in there, that'd be awesome. Um, although, you know, I was going to say, like, it'd be harder to get something from everyone into the game, but Warden is there, so who knows. Uh, are you ever going to try and make a party out of all the characters created by Codename for the game? Um, hmm. I suppose if we had enough. We just, we don't create our own original champions that frequently, right? Like... Um, the idea behind the game is that you're uniting various iconic characters from across different stories and shows. Um, so, you know, that doesn't really include our characters. Our characters are intended at times to just fill in the gaps. Um, although right now, I guess I'm using three of them, aren't I? Um, I have Korth, Zorbu, and Nurak all in the formation. So, um, I suppose it's possible. They also, the, uh, the champions created for the game don't... Um, have a lot of synergistic ability. Grama. Yeah, I guess Grama is too, isn't he? <laughs> isn't she? Yeah, Grama is also an original. So I'm not even that far off an original champion. I just need to add uh, 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 Stokey Ugh. and um, Warden. Hmm. Interesting. Um, 
I would love to see an option to exchange silver chests for gold chests at some point. Has that ever been discussed? Um, it has. It's not something we're looking at doing, um, but it has. Uh, Soju Drama Queen. Will we ever see Heroes of the Veil champions? Huh. Some good good champions on that show. Um, it's funny because when it started, it was Mike Merle's DMing, and then Todd was one of the players, and now Todd is the DM. Um, so I guess his character is gone, and it's just it's like you got Lauren and. Uh, and TJ, and who else is on that show? I haven't actually met the entire cast. I mean, I've met Lauren and TJ, but I don't think I've personally... No, I have met Adam Bradford, actually. Um, yeah, I mean, there's lots of good characters on the show. It's a possibility. Yeah. Uh, is there a Construct Evelyn skin or a Ring of Winter Paulton skin? Um, there aren't. Um... That isn't to say that there never will be, but there are not now. Zool. 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 Like the fridge scene in uh, Ghostbusters. Uh, will we see new Blessing tiers this year? I can't comment. Uh, yeah. Um, any chance we will see members of the Chain of Acheron? Um, well, so, I mean, I guess there's like there's always a chance because, you know, the, the breadth and history of D&D &D is... Uh, massive and you know it's uh you know they're an interesting group um i don't i could say that it's not something that we're currently planning uh, all righty oh this is a long question okay hold on a second uh dylan this is less of an idle champion question and more of a D, &D question in a campaign I'm playing in, our last session, we fought an adult white dragon. The party was on their last legs. Most people down. My Bladesinger wizard had seven hit points. Um, the dragon's final attack hit and crit me, <laughs> doing enough damage to kill me outright. Instead, the DM crippled me by ripping my arm off. Would you have done the same thing? Um, maybe. I think... I. I think that heroes are only as interesting as what they go up against. And that when you're in D and D, um, there should be a chance that you're going to lose any encounter, which obviously gets a lot harder once player levels start getting higher. Cause like once you start getting into like the 10, 11, 12, 13 range, like the power levels just take off. You start getting ridiculous spells, um, et cetera, you know, three attacks on your fighter or, uh, extra crit die on your barbarian or you know shape shifting into elementals on your druid etc um so you start getting like there's like this you know legendary hero level power that you start to get into where encounters start to get more challenging to develop but like at the end of the day like just thinking back to real life hist history you know wild bill hickok one of the greatest gunslingers in the history of the west uh was murdered in a bar because somebody came up behind him and shot him in the head and i think that the mortality of your characters is something that, me personally, I like to have exist in a game. So I feel like at any point you should have the opportunity to lose an encounter if you're, you know, too arrogant about it or whatever. I mean, sure, you could see a whole army of gnolls coming at you and be like, eh, I'm going to drop a fireball on them and kill them all in one shot, which you can. Um, but, I, you know, I, I personally think that, like, you need to be able to, it needs to be possible for the party to lose. Um, but at the same time, as a, as a game master or a dungeon master, you shouldn't be just aiming to murder your whole party. Like, I know it says total party kill on my, on my sleeve, but that's not, that's not the goal of a DM. The goal of a DM should be for the, to make sure that everybody at the table has a good time. So I guess my question to you, Hellastream, is by not instantly dying and having possibly a TPK, did you have fun losing an arm and considering what that character's life is going to be like moving forward, armless. Um, because if you, if, if, if that's interesting to you, if it prevented, it presented you with something that you weren't expecting and you had fun playing it, then I think it was a great choice. Um, that said, uh, personally, I probably would have killed you. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, I would have rolled the dice to hit right in front of you so that there was no disputing whether or not it was one of those behind the DM screen. Actually, you got crit. Like, just roll it. It's like, oh, that's it. I made a player um, who fell into a spike trap last year, Nick, if he's listening. Um, uh, he fell into a spike pit, and I'm like, cool, roll 2d10. And he's like, both zeros. Does that mean that I take no damage? I'm like, no, you take 20. He's like, my character's unconscious. Um, but, you know, it's just uh, it's, it's all part of the fun. Uh, errant Engineer. Not using the new Companions of the Hall build. I am not, um, at least not currently. I've been trying it around. Uh, in a bunch of different ways, and I've just been right now like this. The whole goal of this formation that I just threw together, actually this morning, a while ago, hours ago, um, was just to play around with a Zorbu DPS just to see what I could get up to, um, just with the gear that I have and the champions that I have. Now, obviously, my gear is ridiculously good because hey, I get just about everything. But um, yeah, just just playing around with that really. Um, but I wonder which one it is. I think at least one of my formations is a Companions of the Hall formation. Is this it? Alrighty. Uh, he's in front. Melee. Cool. Taking a while to catch up them levels. Paulton's in this formation. Uh -huh. All right. Doesn't look like... Ooh. Yeah, my damage is down by a number of orders of magnitude having switched to this formation. Look what you've done to me, switching to my companions of the hall group. Um, what can I do about this? I think my Calliope is better than my... And... Still way back. Oh, Zorbu's not in his... I think I might be out of potion specialization, but I don't think Zorbu is in his uh, support spec right now. Yeah, I am out of support ones. That's a party wipe. Look what you've done to me. <laughs> My characters are all dead because of you. Um, all right. Anyways. Uh, let's see. Since the executable is named Idle Dragons, when will we get a literal sleeping dragon hero? an interesting idea. I'm going to sit along. Uh, will there ever be a Force Gray Synergy? Um, it's not something we're planning on right now, Fornix48, um, but, I mean, th there could be, yeah. Uh, might the adventurers, adventurers, uh, from the original Dungeons & Dragons show ever end up in the game? I don't think it's ever stated which D&D setting they are in, so they could be in the Forgotten Realms. Hey, that's a. It's always a possibility. I know that. Um, I know that we have the option to if we wanted to introduce them. They need a little updating because uh, some of their designs are a little bit um, unacceptable in the modern era. <laughs> Think about you know, young young girls in leather, you know, fur bikinis. It's like it's, it's not really something that's actually okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's possible we could add them. I just don't know that uh, we will, given the. I mean, we have a long list of characters we already want to add, so. Uh, uh, let's see. When is the Idle Champions storybook coming out? Um, storybook. I don't know that we're planning on doing a storybook. Uh, if you're referring to the coloring book, um, that is delayed and TBD, and there's nothing I can, there's no information I can give you on that right now, unfortunately. Uh, Joker's Forever. Is Warden's weapon a hex blade? And if so, does this mean he, they actually, uh, made a pact because hex blades are also conjurers with the ability to summon certain monster allies based on the combination of their level and their pact? Um, 
Warden was uh, uh, was a Warforged designed to be a Warden, uh, managing a prison of, you know, extra dimensional, extra planar threats um, that were alien to the world of Eberron. You know, things that, uh, you know, even during the Great War needed to be locked away. And so, you know, House Caneth made a made a made a prison and warden was created to administer and manage it and um at an indeterminate time uh, uh when the great war came to an end and the morning occurred uh you know one of the casualties was also warden and the prison uh you know warden was highly corrupted by something I mean, it's it's implied that it's Hadar, uh, but it w- obviously couldn't directly be Hadar, right? Anyway, so uh, uh, you know, Warden became a, a thing. You know, was corrupted by this power. Um, Warden doesn't summon monsters. Uh, it was never part of their design. Um, even the actual, because I, I ended up doing a D and D Beyond character sheet for Warden, which I can share if I can find it. Uh, Whoops, no, wrong page, wrong page. Uh, um, anyways, I ended up doing a full character sheet, but uh, summoning wasn't part of it. It was very much a, a, a gish, like just a straight up hex blade, get into the middle of combat uh, character. Uh, yeah, it's still here. Bum, 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 bum. Shareable link, copy. Uh, I'll just share in chat. Warden level 12. Hexblade, Warlock. Boom. Ah, there, it's in chat. And then five or ten seconds after I say that, it'll show up. Uh, or wait, no, it'll show up, and then five or ten seconds later, I'll show it up. I'll say it. Um, all right. Bringing back an oldie but a goodie question. Uh oh. Any chance for some event or contest where one fan gets to work with the devs to get their player character put in the game? Um, we are not planning on, a, on that at this time, but I like that people keep asking it. Um, if this is something that everybody would like to see, please keep asking it. Um, but I'll make another note about it. I do put this feedback together to give to the dev team at different times. Um, have you thought about having campaign sets for this where after you finish one adventure at level 50, at 51 you just do the next one in the sequence? Just going to the next adventure in that area until you have a set. Um, it's an interesting idea, Silver Griffin. Uh, I mean, I could pass that kind of idea along. I think it's unlikely because um, I just think about what the memory usage for the game will be like um, if all the adventures are sequential like that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to pass it along to uh, the dev team and see if that's something that they might consider. Uh, Will we be getting some more Strength 16 or Evil Support Champions coming up in the near future? The last added champions have been great, but Kron does my go-to. I enjoy Korth, but he shares a spot with Dinar. Um, I, I mean, I get wildly better numbers with um, Korth and Kron than I do with Dinar and Kron, but hey, I mean, it depends on your equipment. Um, I can say that the next champion is neither a Strength-based nor an Evil Champion. That's how I can answer that. Uh, Nazan Bear 75 why was Diath renamed Xander? Uh, we are unable to comment. Uh, Master Joshua, Dylan, any plans to include more heroes of Chult? I'm sure I'm not. Um, I'm not who would like, I'm not the only one who'd like to bring up, uh, bring Dragon Bait up to the Sword Coast. Um, so, I mean, we do plan <laughs> to include, include uh, Dragon Bait as an evergreen unlock uh, in the future. Uh, we were kind of setting that up with the storyline for the Tomb of Annihilation campaign we have in game. Um, and the plan, at least it was, it kind of shifts around. The plan was um, that when we release the last, you know, the next and final tier of difficult adventure variants for the, the uh, Tomb of Annihilation campaign, that with a challenging scenario, not unlike Azaka's Procession Part Two was when that was released, um, there would be a, a you know a series of variants where you could unlock Dragon Bait. Um, that content um, has been 
pushed back quite a few times um, just in favor of other priorities, trying to get you know more quality of life fixes in the game, more bug fixes, more content, more features that we want to do because you know there's a number of features we want to add to the game still. And so it's just like it's kind of been shuffled to the side as a, as a, as a priority. But it's, it is on our to-do list in terms of content that we want to add. Um, are there D&D Beyond character sheets for all of the champions in the game or stat blocks available? Uh, there are not. Um, I know that Chris created a, uh, a sheet for Stokey because uh, uh, Chris Dupuy, our live services manager, um, played, in a, 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 a played in a podcast as Stokey. Uh, played, was it uh, uh, How We Roll, Dungeon Drunks, and... Oh, frack, I can't remember the last one. How We Roll, Dungeon Drunks. There's three of them. Anyways, <laughs> there were three. Uh, he played Stokey. So there is a Stokey sheet somewhere. Um, I just made the Warden one because while uh, while I was writing Warden's story um, and Warden's champion spotlight and Kat was designing Warden, um, I made the, uh, the character sheet as well because um, I thought it would be a fun thing to include because it's just, it's a pretty straightforward um, build. Of a of a hexblade warlock, um, and it's not even an exploitative one. I mean, if you really want to exploit a five E hexblade, oh man, you can do some stuff. Devil sight plus darkness is allows for some for some just for some bullshit, really. <laughs> Giving enemies disadvantage on hitting you and you advantage on hitting them is just so good in melee. You combine that with sentinel, and then they can't get away, which warden also has. So I guess it's not the worst build ever, but yeah, there's there's just there's options. Uh, all right, let's see. Can we see a tank with ranged attacks? Um, so this is something that came up in a discussion before, people talking about like less tropey, more um, outside the normal versions of tanks and other stuff just to make it more interesting. And it's not something we've done yet, but um, we may. Um, as a DM, I frown on that combo because it Fs up your allies. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, Supli, yeah, I, I agree. Um, it's one of those things where it's one of the, uh, that's just kind of a thing about min-max builds in general, and I'll, I'll get to that some other time. Um, anyways, can we see a tank with ranged attacks? It may happen. Um, there isn't one planned in our immediate future, but um, certainly it is, it is possible and could create for some interesting things. Uh, alrighty, any word on group-specific mini-campaigns like Companions of the Hall doing an idle version of their Search of the Hall, etc.? Um, no word on it. It's something that... So, when we first released um, Caddy Alone um, as a variant for uh, the first year of... Was it The Running or Greengrass? I forget which one. Anyways, it was for the first year. I think it was The Running. That sounds right. Um, anyway, so when we first released Caddy Alone, players were like, oh, you know, they really liked being able to have a hero-centric adventure. And then later we did the one where it was um, it was Bruner and um, Wolfgar. The idea being that like Bruner is kind of like a surrogate father to Wolfgar, and so they had an adventure. And so like when we have the opportunity to do stuff like that, we really like it. Um, what makes it a challenge is that because, you know, most of the companions of the hall are event champions, um, a player kind of would need to have them all in order to be able to play you know an adventure that required them all and like locking it behind that and I don't know like it opened up a lot of stuff that we don't have easy fixes for um, so it's it's something that we would kind of like to approach at some point um, but that we don't have a good way of doing now with the game way that the game is and the changes required to do that are kind of a lot <laughs> so um, it's a hard maybe Garwar is basically what I'm getting to Uh, are there any plans to have more uses for Black Viper's gems or more tiers of bonuses? Um, that's something that we may look at at some point. Yeah. Uh, does Zorbu's lifelong enemies have a cap? Um, I don't believe it currently does DC backroads, which is one of the reasons why at the beginning of the stream I was saying that uh, Zorbu might be overpowered now. Uh, Hellastream, what class is Dragon Bait? Is he a paladin in Idol Champions? Um, Dragon Bait is a Soriel. Uh, is is his race and uh, yeah, he will be a paladin when he eventually gets added to the game. Um, 
Question. If I have two formations that I use for mission, i.e. a trash run group and a boss group, is there a way if a certain amount of time has passed, uh, can their ultimates be off timer and ready to use? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. If I have two formations that I use for mission, is there a way, if a certain amount of time has passed, uh, their ultimate timers can be... Uh, so you, you're wanting to know if the benched formations ultimates are counting down? Is that what you're asking? <laughs> Sorry, the awkward silence. I'm like reading. I'm like, did... Um, anyways, uh, yeah, if the timers for the characters that are not active in the formation were counting down while they're not in the formation, that kind of just means that the ultimates are always ready to use at the same time. It's kind of overpowered. Uh, yeah, um, I'm going to move to the next one because I'm not quite sure how to answer that one yet. Uh, feel free to ignore this question if the answer is just I can't say, but any plans for the anniversary? It seems right around the corner. Uh, well, I mean, it's right around the corner, sure, but it's also it's at the end of the month, and we have a lot of stuff in, coming in between now and then. Um, so we will talk more about the anniversary celebration closer to then. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Is there anything that is realistically available for Cathris's class rebuild? Um, if you're referring to recent changes in the C-Team campaign and wondering why our version of Cathris Straub um, is of a different subclass in appearance, uh, I mean, our Cathris Straub is classic. Uh, still got two eyes, <laughs> right? Like, um, you know, it's more of like a, a earlier in the, the campaign uh, all of our characters are kind of taken from different sla snapshots of that character's existence, and none of them are intended to be definitive versions. Like, while Dritz may still be Dritz, um, you know, Caddy, Bree, Regis, and Wolfgar have been reincarnated since. They are not Caddy, Bree, Regis, and Wolfgar. They have different names. They're different people. Same person, person, soul, whatever. But, um, you know, our version of the Companions of the Hall is the original version. Uh, so it's just kind of, we take characters from a certain point. Uh, it's never our intent um, to, um, yeah, it, uh, it's never our intent to have the most current up-to-date version of every character constantly. It's just not how we approach the game. Uh, do you have a favorite non-D&D movie or show that has shown creatures of them such as the beholder in big trouble in little china um oh god i forgot about that god i love that movie big trouble in little china is a blast oh man uh a non favorite non D, &D movie or show that has shown creatures in them like the beholder um i mean there's tarasks in all the godzilla movies right because godzilla is a tarask basically Big fan of those. Uh, any chance of keyboard support for redeeming combinations on console? I um, mean, you know, I could pass that along, Drunk27. Drunk um, I'm not as familiar with the uh, the intricacies and differences across the platforms like that. Uh, that's totally outside my exper area of expertise, but I can pass that along um, and see if something happens. Uh, any plans to make saved formations more visual or intuitive to use? Uh, with so many different formation patterns out there, I often forget what I saved in each slide. Um, that's kind of uh, that's kind of uh, like part of what we want to address with a more robust formation save quality of life update. The system itself, uh, and uh, you know. Whether you know, we've had things like players requesting being able to name them, or being able to have attach icons to them, or you know, having 
six or nine or ten of them, like just having more options, including, uh, you know, familiars in their formation saves, whatever. And so we're going to kind of we're going to kind of look at and approach the whole problem at one point instead of just either adding to it or just adding names or whatever. So uh, we haven't got to that point yet. It's something that we plan to do. But uh, yeah, that's kind of where we're at. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a tricky thing working on some features that you can or can't talk about at different times. And, you know, we're just like waiting to talk about different things. So plans to add formation saves for familiars. Um, yes, we do plan to include some kind of familiar formation save feature. Uh, but what that looks like and how it gets implemented in the game is very much TBD. Uh, already, it looks like I got more from uh, Dracon Oak Leaf's question, so I can go back to it. So, uh, for the if I have two formations that I use for mission, and one is a trash run group and one is a boss group, uh, wondering if after a certain amount of time the ultimates will be off cooldown. Um, if it takes 20 minutes to get to the next boss, it's a pain to have to wait for the boss group to reset their cooldown. Well, what you can do, Dracon Oak Leaf, is use your boss group until their cooldowns are done and then switch to your leveling, your trash group, and move forward. Um, but yeah, uh, champions that aren't in the formation are not going to have their ultimates coming off cooldown because that would, that would allow you to have every ultimate in the game every certain number of minutes, which just would allow you to constantly be swapping in characters and firing off ultimates, which, by the way, right now, ultimates, thanks to base ultimate damage, are real powerful, like real powerful often allowing you to push much further. So we're not planning on changing that right now. Um, that isn't to say that it will never change, but we're not planning on uh, changing that functionality. Uh, bench stacking and moving characters back and forth to have access to more abilities or more debuffs is not a feature that we are super happy with. And while we don't feel like it is so out of control that it's causing a lot of unintended stuff in the way the game is played, um, it's something that we're keeping our eye on because it's, you know, we want there to be both benefit for playing actively, but not so much benefit to it that players feel obligated to because this is idle champions of the Forgotten Realms, not active champions of the Forgotten Realms. So, yeah, it's a it's a tricky tricky balancing act. Uh, any chance we will be able to get Nordum the Modron? Uh, or Fall from Grace, from Planescape Torment, as characters. Um, well, Nordum the Modron uh, has been in the game as an NPC, but as a, as far as a champion is concerned, uh, it's a hard maybe. Um, yeah. Our, our challenge these days is that, you know, we have 17 events in a calendar year, and, you know, with the number of champions that could potentially exist with the number of you know amazing characters from you know uh ed greenwood and r.a salvatore and aaron m evans and just all of the all of the novel series there's, I mean, there's tons of characters uh from the other awesome games i mean you know baldur's gate one two and soon well soon probably years away but baldur's gate one two and three characters neverwinter characters um you know, Planescape Torment characters, all the different, you know, source books that have had tons of characters, many of whom have been like other just villains or whatever. But like, you know, this is like, so there's no, no shortage of characters. And then on top of that, we work with shows, you know? Uh, you know, we work with Penny Arcade and Acquisitions Incorporated, the C team, and we work with, you know, uh, high rollers. Um, so 17 characters a year through events is a challenge, which has required a lot of shuffling. And the amount, but the amount of work required to make each individual champion can't really go faster than it already goes on our end. Like it requires the amount of art, like development, you know, planning, development, coordination, art, and et cetera, marketing time. Like each each one requires a set amount that the minimum is still weeks of turnaround time. So we can only fit so many in a year. It's just it's a it's it's a it's a challenge. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, we do, it's, it's enough of a challenge that especially during the summer, like right now where, you know, our office has like a third of the people in it, um, because there are so many people on vacation. I mean, we have, uh, two of our five artists are here right now because th 
three of them are on vacation or otherwise out of the office. Uh, you know, two of our three founders are not here right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's busy. It's real busy. Um, so anyways, long story short, uh, we're human and we can only work so fast and, you know, we can only, uh, we can only actively development a handful of champions at a time. And then the planning in the background is something that, quite frankly, um, has Chris coming in early, staying late, and uh, up at nights trying to figure out how to best address because he cares a lot about you guys and works his ass off to try and deliver, um, you know, an impossible amount of stuff on a regular basis. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting challenge. Anyways, um, all that is to say that. We don't work on champions too far in advance, but the number of characters that we're trying to get out and the timelines that we have for them, like they're actually quite aggressive. It is hard to put out characters as fast as we do. Alrighty, uh, if characters change over time, would it be possible to upgrade, for example, old Bruner to new Bruner at some point, unlocking different character stats and abilities? Um, that's a hard, hmm, maybe. Um, it's not something that we're planning on doing, and it's not something that we have tied to part of our plans for upcoming features at the moment. Um, that being said, we do have other progression features planned or in development. Uh, but yeah, uh, upgrading characters to the new version of characters is not something that we've really planned to do at all. Um, you know, it would be weird having the new versions of Regis and. Cadbury and Wolfgar. I can't even remember the names of their new characters, to be honest. Um, and yeah, so it's just, it's it's not. Uh, no Hellstream, I am not at my wall, but um, I'm not going to hit my wall with this party lineup. Yeah, four. I, I maxed out like 418, yeah. What I need is to go back a bunch of areas and mess with my formation. Alrighty, so. Um, I'm just going to pick up Grama and put her here. And then what else can I do? Plunk. No, that's not going to help. What else do I have here? So, you know, that formation that I was playing around with was better than this. And then short-term fixes. Go back up to the front. Kill those crows. All right, let's see how much further they get now that the DPS has gone up seven orders of magnitude. All right, what about a feature that allowed you to toggle off the cooldowns on active champions and toggle on the cooldowns on bench champions so that you still had to wait the total amount of time without swapping formations? If too powerful, the feature could increase cooldown times or something. Uh, but it would remove the need to sit and wait with the suboptimal. Um, no, we're not going to kind of go in that direction of Ken Tanker's Gandalf. Um, we want players to have to choose which ultimates they're using, especially given how, how how powerful they are now. The intention is not that you have easy access to, if you have a 10 character formation, you know, 18 to 20 ultimates at a boss fight. That's just, it's not, it's not how we kind of built that. So, um, like, I appreciate the thinking behind that. But it's that's not a that's not a direction that we want to take it to go. Uh, all right. Could you maybe do the character upgrades be super late game level upgrades? I'm not sure what that means. Isildur or Ilsidur. 
Uh, who are you voting for for president of D&D Beyond? Oh, Liam. That was, I think I said that last, last week, but uh, it's an easy vote for me um, for a couple reasons. Uh, one, uh, uh, Liam is the voice of Illidan Stormrage, the edgiest of Warcraft heroes, uh, and therefore he gets my vote. Uh, but also, I mean, I don't know how many of you have been following uh, Critical Role of late, but the beginning of last week's show had Liam do an homage to a, a film from like, what, 76, I think, Network came out. Uh, and it was awesome. It was so good. It was, I enjoyed it more than anything that actually happened in the episode because it was so good. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, Liam, vote Liam. Hashtag vote Liam. <laughs> that whole Morton Kane and his rolling in his grave thing made me just, I was just losing it. I was laughing so bloody hard. Yeah. Ha, boom. Yeah. Vote Liam. That isn't to say that Sam hasn't had some awesome bits and it's totally funny and I don't like Sam as well. I do, but um, yeah, Liam, Liam's got my vote. Hashtag vote with your Johnson. Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah. Vote for Sam. Despite Liam's final speech, Sam's presidency will be a lot more entertaining. Just think of the scandals. I feel like there are enough presidencies with scandals already. Uh, and on that note, um, I'd like to thank everybody for joining me this week um you know i know that it's just me talking myself raw but uh it's nice to have you you come uh, come for the combination but stick around to, to talk about uh, nerdy stuff and D, D. um so this has been our show for today uh, thursday august 1st oh wait one more thing so we have three absolutely amazing Max Dunbar, ooh, uh, uh, Shandy uh, uh, drawings, uh, pencils and inks here to give away. And the winners bump, bada, bump, 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 are, uh, so our first winner is, uh, uh, is Julian from Helsinki, Finland. Finland, yeah. Um, uh, uh, who will be receiving one of these. And then uh, Matthew from Bay City, Michigan, United States. And uh, Tasukin uh, from Kankani, Illinois, United States. Uh, those are our three winners. Uh, we're going to reiterate the winners on Twitter. Um, and uh, we will be sending those out. Oh, hey, that's me, Crazy Matt Captain. Um, yeah, if you are one of those three names. Uh, but yeah, uh, one of our winners is from Finland. Two of them are Americans. And uh, these are awesome. Like seriously, uh, yeah, just, just absolutely fantastic uh, pieces of Max Dunbar art. Uh, Max Dunbar also did the the cover of Shadows of the Vampire, you know, with Minsk and Boo and Delina and Crydle and Shandy and Neris all fighting off hordes of undead. So, just one more of those folks left. Uh, anyways, uh, this has been our show for Thursday, August 1st, 2019. Thank you all so much for joining me uh, and participating both in uh, the Idol Champions community and the D&D community. Uh, you guys are awesome. This show exists because of a number of amazing folks behind the scenes, including my co-producer Erica, as well as our partners at Dungeons & Dragons. Greg, Bart, Pelham, Allison, Shawlang, and Lisa. Welch's Game Juice is up next. No critical role tonight because they are at Gen Con, so there will be a show tomorrow to watch. Uh, take care, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend and uh, hashtag vote Liam. Vote with your Johnson.